Hello Vinyl community. So I thought I will do something different today. I've made um, one of those famous uh, best of lists um, because I've never done that before. Um, at least uh, as far as I can remember. Certainly not on video. Um, but uh, to choose my top 10 albums, my top 10 all-time albums uh, uh, turned out to be a bit of a failure because I just couldn't decide. I mean, it's just too much and uh, it turned out to be a little too painful to do. <laughs> so I had just, uh, first I just raised the ceiling a bit and started to get together my favorite 15 albums. Now that didn't work, so I ended up making my top 20 albums. Um, well, that almost worked, but not really, so I thought like 25 is quite a good number for that, isn't it? So I made a list with my top 25 LPs or albums or records, um, because at this point I thought, okay, I need to, I need to get done with it, otherwise uh, I will continue this until I'm making my top 100 and um, who has the time to do this kind of project well, unless you work for the Rolling Stone magazine or something like that. So, um, um, of course, the, the whole idea of making a best of list is somewhat nonsensical in itself. So uh, it should be taken with a huge uh, grain of salt, I think. Yeah, um, I think uh, these uh, the records I've chosen um, could probably be categorized in three groups. As far as you, the uh, the observer, uh, goes, uh, there might be records that are quite an obvious choice. There will be records that you probably never heard before, so this might be interesting to discover something new. And uh, third, there are certainly some records in this collection that you know, but uh, my choice to put them there you will find probably a little bit shocking or revolting. <laughs> so we will see. There, are, I think there are some uh, little surprises in there. So, um, well, let me start with couple of albums that didn't make the cut, but almost made the cut. I think it's called uh, an honorary mention. Um, there are some albums here that are on CD because they do not exist on vinyl. If they would exist on vinyl, I would have probably bought them. So let me show you three albums that uh, almost made my 25 list, but not entirely, that are on CD. First of all, first one is uh, the album Zom by Muslim Gauze. This is a quite cool uh, mixture of sort of a tribal sound and uh, a very uh, sort of uh, electronic ambient music. Uh, it's quite an interesting album. I mean, it was a very controversial project in the 90s, as far as I remember. Um, especially because uh, the guy who made Muslim Goss had uh, all kind of issues with Israel. So um, that was always somehow the topic on the table. But I was in it for the music, and this is uh, probably this album here is probably the ultimate ganja recording. You should look it up; it's quite fascinating, very minimalistic. Rumba Angelina by Radio Tarifa. This was the first album by Radio Tarifa. This came out on CD only as well. Um, this is uh, what you sometimes call uh, Nuevo Flamenco. Uh, it's a fascinating mixture of flamenco music, but these guys uh, perfectly combined it with uh, the sounds of North Africa and uh, medieval music. So this is very fascinating, wonderful album. Uh, it actually breaks my heart a little bit that it's not in my 25 list, but what can you do? Uh, traditional music of Amygdala by Laszlo Hortobadje. Laszlo Hortobadje is, uh, is a Hungarian experimental musician. This was his second album and this is a fascinating journey into a complete different time and space and uh, it's quite interesting and intriguing and it sounds like nothing else, I would say. So a uh, couple of vinyl records that almost made the cut. Certainly Upstairs at Eric's by Yazoo, love this album. Um, maybe I should have put it in, but um, 
yeah, I could say that about each one of those uh, honorary mentions. Fragile, but yes, obvious choice. Close to the edge, but yes, it's almost my favorite yes album, I would say. Fascinating record. The Shoot of Assembly by Brian Eno, great ambient album. Um, love it, uh, almost my favorite ab ambient album by Eno. Cluster and Eno, well known. Sort of late 70s uh, collaboration between Eno and the German band Cluster. Like it a lot. That album by Camel, Mirage. Uh, great prog rock slash um, jazz fusion music. Similar vein. Shamal by Gong. Fascinating transition album between uh, uh, two permutations of a rather psychedelic band. Um, yeah, Technodelic by Yellow Magic Orchestra. Still can't believe I didn't put it in in my 25. That happened. <laughs> um, Primitive Man by Ice House is a wonderful uh, pop record, uh, pop rock record uh, from the rather early 80s um, with a hint of uh, new wave music. Um, this is a wonderful record uh, with great songwriting. Um, I generally like Ice House, but this might be their best. Trilogy by Emerson, Lake and Palmer. Yeah, it's difficult to decide uh, what my favorite Emerson, Lake and Palmer album is. I think, even though I like the project, my opinion is that every Emerson, Lake and Palmer album is somewhere heavily flawed. So, even though they created these wonderful albums, I don't think there is such a thing as the perfect EOP album. Uh, Nada by Death in June. Another. Controversial pick, uh, fascinating, dark, uh, folky music with a lot of electronic experimentation. One of the strangest uh, records here in this presentation. So that's it. Those were the honorary mentions. Here we go. So here are my 25 most favorite albums of all time. The Ferment of uh, almost, um, yeah, like 35 years of uh, listening to music and collecting music, music and trying uh, new uh, areas of sound and experimentation and sometimes going completely into the direction of plain pop. Why not? Um, so, uh, let, let me take the first stack here. So, um, number 25 is uh, The Influence by the Canadian band Psyche. Now this is pure new wave music, 80s new wave music, uh, late 80s. Uh, this is a wonderful album, I really like the clear, the clear uh, musical intention in it. Uh, there are no fillers on here, so this is a wonderful listen. Love it. The next one comes on CD. It does not exist on vinyl. Um, this is the album 1000 Years by the English uh, ambient project TUU or 2. Um, after all these years I never figured out how to how to say it, if it's TUU or 2. Um, this came out on a German label. Uh, this was their first album. This came out in a limited edition in a nice wooden box. It's numbered with the number 93 here in this case. Um, so this is a wonderful uh, ambient music uh, that uh, I just simply love. Um, number 23 is Irwani Kompeto by Aki Koyano. Of course I've shown this already on in my vinyl community videos. So cool uh, mid-70s sound, sort of a mixture between uh, um, well, sort of a early Japanese synth pop combined with uh, jazzy tunes and uh, all kind of interesting ideas. It's a great album. Should be a bit more known, I think. Um, number 22 
In Search of the Lost Court by the Moody Blues. Now I'm not that much of a Moody Blues fan, um, but uh, I believe this album is quite fascinating and uh, probably the best they ever made. Um, uh, it's a hilarious uh, musical journey uh, through the sounds of the late 60s. Um, and um, yeah, what's not to like? Um, it's a great record. Now something different. Uh, number 21. Night Clubbing by Grace Jones. Now this was not so easy for me to pick because uh, I like the other Grace Jones albums as well. And uh, so um, yeah. Some of these decisions are kind of on the fence, but in the end I have to make some call about it. So, uh, nightclubbing, Grace Jones, early 80s, uh, it's a wonderful dance record, um, quite flawless. Uh, of course, there's a lot of uh, Sly and Robbie playing the rhythm section there. So you get a wonderful sound, great rhythms. Number 20. Hello, I Must Be Going by Mr. Phil Collins. Now you maybe have not expected that one, but I think this is one of the best pop records ever recorded. This is a wonderful album. Uh, this was his second solo album. Um, opening with a great uh, enigmatic track. And uh, the rest of the album is uh, also quite interesting. Uh, some very dark moments and uh, some very light moments. Uh, it's it's quite an intriguing pop album. Great uh, listen when you're on a journey, for example. Uh, this does not disappoint. Um, number 19, Brilliant Trees by David Sylvian, his first solo album. This is a fascinating record. I mean, the music is not as much in your face as you would I have that with uh, a lot of other artists, especially from that time. Um, so it's something you have to return back to it again and again and um, just give it more tries. Uh, it's a um, wonderful collaboration of all kind of uh, fascinating musicians. You have John Hassel playing on it and uh, Richard Barbieri, of course, Holger Sukai, uh, Ryuichi Sakamoto. Danny Thompson and so on and so on. Wonderful album. In parts very smooth, in, in parts intriguing. Um, quite fascinating. Number 18. The Rubaiyat of Dorothy Ashby by Dorothy Ashby. I like Dorothy Ashby. Now this album here I think it was very important for her because this is uh, one of her uh, albums where she basically had all the creative control all songs are written by her and uh, there's a lot of... Um, she was of course a well-known harpist, jazz harpist, but uh, there's a lot of music played on the Japanese koto, which is that instrument that you can see here in the picture. It's a wonderful seminal album. Um, it's uh, uh, really something very unique and fascinating and um, it came out in 1960... actually 1970 I think, yeah, it was 1970 album. Um, next one, number 17, Rilea by Yes. Now, uh, as you saw in my honorary mentions, uh, it took me a little bit of thinking which uh, Yes album I actually do prefer. I mean, there are... It was a very close call, of course, because I like Close to the Edge, I like Fragile, I like the Yes album. Um, this is also probably my most favorite uh, Roger Dean cover design. It's a wonderful painting, not as colorful as the others, um, but uh, even more fascinating. Yeah, I mean, the music is... Uh, this is the only album he has did with Patrick Moraz, and uh, it goes a little more in the direction of jazz fusion, um, but... Uh, it is certainly the most progressive to a certain extent, I think, especially because of a track like Sound Chaser. Um, but I always liked it. So, uh, the next one is... Uh, huh. It's Hard by The Who. 
Oh, well, that's an interesting choice, probably because, um, as far as I know, this is this might be the the least uh, favorite The Who album. Uh, so you hardly hear anything uh, very positive said about it. I think it's completely underrated. I think it's actually one of their best. It's a fascinating record with uh, great tracks on it. Uh, a lot of good writing by John Entwistle. Um, and uh, fantastic Townsend songs. Um, it's actually amazing that this is not uh, sort of uh, revered, uh, appreciated album because uh, there's not a single filler on it. It's just one great song after another um, by a band that was, of course, massively falling apart in decline and uh, <laughs> being <laughs> kind of um, destroyed by drug and alcohol abuse. But it has a very, very sensational fascination about it, I think. I like it. So, what next? Um, oh yes, number 15 is uh, Remain in Light. By the Talking Heads. Um, without being much of a Talking Heads fan, I must say, uh, I very much love this album. This is uh, another Brian Eno production and um, I like the the fierce nature of this album, uh, the the rhythm, uh, the, the it's very it's very forceful, it's very very uh, atmospheric, it's very uh, it's like a force of nature, that's what I call it. Great album, Remain in Light um, number 14 is uh, Yukihiro Takahashi, What Me Worry. Uh, this was one of his earlier solo albums, I think his third maybe. Um, it came out in 1982 at Alpha Records. Uh, it, I knew there would be one Yukihiro Takahashi album in my top 25. Um, it, took a little bit uh, thinking uh, which one it should be in the end. I decided for this one. I just like the songs, the composition. It's it's, uh, it's a great early 80s record, I think, uh, with uh, cool ideas and uh, very pleasant songs. What's next? Uh, oh yes, so number 13 is uh, Seven Souls by Material. Now I like Material. Uh, that's a band that changed their their musical style quite a lot over the course of years in the 80s and in the 90s. Uh, this might be my favorite album by them. Um, it took a bit comparing again, um, but I like everything about this album. I mean, it's uh, it's so original. It's so different from other pop records. Uh, um, it kind of sucks you in right away and. Uh, it confronts you with uh, all kind of interesting ideas. Um, uh, the, vo the the voice, the the lyrics of this album are mostly covered by William S. Burroughs. So you always know you are on a strange path when <laughs> Bill Burroughs appears on a record. And um, it's very fascinating, very fascinating record. Um, um, and uh, without doubt, one of my favorite. Number 12 is the album Meli by the Indonesian singer Meli Guzlo. Now uh, this came out uh, in the very late uh, 1999, I think. Oh yeah, actually I was right about that, exactly. And uh, it exists only on CD. And uh, so I, I spent some time in Indonesia and uh, of course always looked into the Indonesian rock and pop music scene, which is quite checkered and in parts very bad and in parts very fascinating. But I do believe this, at least at that time and age, this was probably the best album you could buy in Indo Indonesia. Meli Guzlo is very much uh, admired there and might be one of their most uh, famous uh, musicians and singers. Uh, she's quite an eccentric uh, personality and she writes wonderful music. So uh, when I listened to this album, I thought, wow, this is really a great pop album, track by track by track. Um, so I was very much intrigued. Actually, when I came home, I brought a whole box with these albums, uh, with these CDs, and just started to giving out to my friends, <laughs> sort of like a missionary that came out of the jungle. So uh, Melly by Melly, great album. So what is next? Oh yes, uh, another classic. Uh, 
Never Forever by Kate Bush. Um, I've always liked Kate Bush. I like all Kate Bush albums. Uh, so this was a bit of a hard uh, choice uh, just to decide which one of them is uh, my favorite. Uh, because actually I like the dreaming as much probably as this one. I like uh, Hounds of Love certainly as much as this one. In the end I picked this one simply because uh, uh, there is something underlying here that fascinates me. I think this is an album about uh, about uh, about the nature of the female, about femininity. It's about uh, it's kind of it's kind of taking its path between sort of a Freudian and Jungian ideas about it, and um, yeah, it's full of uh, beautiful songs. So some of them are um, quite in, created in a very big drama, while others are very very small and very uh almost like uh like like some fascinating sketches um yeah i i'm rambling and blathering right now um but uh probably you like this album as well and if not it's about time <laughs> 